In this video, we explain how to carry out a definite integration of the clausius clapeyron equation. Right. The Clapeyron equation and clausius clapeyron equation are uh, expressions that allow us to calculate what the slope of the phase boundaries are in a phase diagram. This is what a phase diagram is. You have uh, the regions uh, that determine the phase stability of a particular substance. Okay, as a function of pressure and temperature. And we know that we can calculate the slopes uh, in each one of these lines using the Clapeyron equation uh, and with an approximation we can calculate what the slopes of these two lines are using the clausius clapeyron equation. Right, so the clausius clapeyron equation is this. Differential of P over differential of T, that's the slope of these phase boundaries, is equal to the pressure at that point, then the enthalpy of the phase transition that end up in, ends up in the gas, alpha to gas, over RT squared. What we do now is try to see if we can use that expression to predict uh, uh, phase equilibria points for uh, either this phase transition or that phase transition. Usually, you're always going to know one point uh, in this line, and that is will be the normal boiling point. Okay, so if you select here one atmosphere of pressure, that will tell you what the boiling point is for that particular substance. Now, the question that we might be able to ask is, well, uh, can you predict what the boiling point would be if you change the pressure to, say, two atmospheres or half atmosphere or a different pressure from one atmosphere? Okay, well, it turns out that uh, you can do that if you know how the slope of this line is changing as you move to higher pressures or lower pressures then you might be able to predict exactly what will be uh, the new boiling point, this TV prime, okay, for the pressure of your choice, okay, uh, X or, or whatever target pressure you, you want. Okay, and again, uh, this requires simply knowledge of how the slope is varying as you go from that point to that point. Well, so to actually do that numerically, what we have to do is carry out an integration of that uh, differential glasses clapeyron equation, and you will see that that's actually not very difficult to do. All right, so uh, the first thing that we do is we take the glass clapeyron equation and then we uh, uh, consolidate terms so that they depend uh, on the same variable. Okay, so we uh, group together the pressures to the left-hand side of expression. We will get differential of P over P. And then temperatures to the right-hand side, we will get delta H more of the phase transition over R T squared. And then this is multiplied by differential of T. Okay, so uh, this sets up our, our differential expression that then we can integrate between the points of interest. Okay, so we want to uh, see the integration between uh, the two boiling points and the two pressures, T1 and T2. All right, so let's see uh, how this integral turns out to be. Notice that uh, the integral of the differential of P over P is simply the natural log of P, natural log of P, evaluated from uh, P1 to P2. And then we have to figure out uh, what the integral of this second term would be. R is a constant, so we can factor it out of the integral. And then uh, we have here also the enthalpy of the phase transition. We know that the enthalpy of the phase transition changes as we change the conditions. But the variation tends to be quite small, especially if your changes in temperature from T1 to T2 and pressure are relatively small, say maybe uh, 10 degrees or 20 degrees. Uh, for example, the variation for the enthalpy evaporization of water uh, from 25 Celsius to 100 Celsius uh, is only a variation of about 4 kilojoules per, per mole or so, uh, and the value is, is about 40 kilojoules per mole. So that's a 10% change in the evaporization enthalpy in a range of 75 degrees. That's, that's a reasonable approximation to make, even though in reality we know that this number is changing. But if we can consider this is constant, then we can also factor it out of the integral, and then we actually have a much simpler integral to solve. Notice that now what you would need to do is uh, simply this. That you can factor out, and then you have to integrate differential of t over t squared. Uh, t squared from t1 to t2. All right, uh, so that's going to be equal to uh, delta h m from alpha to the gas, over R, and the integral of differential of T over T squared is equal to minus 1 
over t, evaluated from t1 to t2. Okay. We can modify this expression a little bit uh, by removing that minus sign, putting it out here. And uh, the final expression that we get for the integrated uh, glass cover equation is going to be natural log of P2 over P1. It's going to be equal to minus the enthalpy of the phase transition alpha to the gas over R and then 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, that is your uh, integrated classes collaborating equation when you have definite limits in the integral. Okay? Again, what is, why do we use this, uh, this uh, equation? What is it good for? And notice that you can predict what the boiling point of a substance is going to be, okay, this T B prime, uh, if you know the boiling point at a particular uh, uh, temperature or at a particular pressure, and then you select uh, a new pressure at which you want to calculate the boiling point. Okay, so that will be one of the uses. Another use that you can have in this expression is say, well, uh, notice that these pressures that you have right here are the pressures of these lines. Uh, that is a line of vapor pressures, right? So this allows you also to predict the vapor pressure as of, as of a substance at the temperature that you want. Okay? Uh, so for example, we know that for water at 100 Celsius, uh, uh, the vapor pressure is equal to one atmosphere. Okay, the question would be, well, what is the vapor pressure? What is the pressure that you have? If you were to increase uh, uh, the temperature of that water to say 120 or 130 Celsius, okay, notice that then your variable would be this P2. That is what you want to calculate the vapor pressure, and uh, you just need to know what the vapor pressure is at a reference temperature uh, uh, T1, and then just select what temperature you want. Okay, so that those are the two uh, important or interesting uh, aspects uh, or that, that uh, our, our calculations that you can do with the Clausius-Cartan equation in the integrated form.